Hi students, welcome to this video session. My name is Samuel Chupu Emeka. In this video session, we shall use multiplicative inverses to solve equations. This is a continuation of the lesson on multiplicative inverses. So, uh, I would recommend that if you finish reading the lesson, it is necessary, it is important that you view the videos to gain a better understanding of the topic. So, as we said in the lesson, multiplicative inverse is the same thing as reciprocal. Okay? Multiplicative inverse is also known as the reciprocal. It's also the reciprocal of a number. And what did we say is the reciprocal of a number? It is that number by which you would multiply the original number to give you a product of 1. Like we, uh, we talked about this in the previous videos, the reciprocal. Like if you want to find the reciprocal of 5, then you ask yourself, what am I going to multiply by 5 to give me 1? And how do you find that out? You just invert or you flip. You flip 5. You know that 5 is the same thing as 5 over 1. So when you flip it, when you flip it, it becomes 1 over 5. Okay, when you flip this, it becomes 1 over 5. So if you now multiply 5 times 1 over 5, 5 will divide and you have 1. 5 will divide 5 and it gives you 1. So, the reciprocal, like we mentioned in the previous videos, is also the same thing as the multiplicative inverse. For this video, we shall use the multiplicative inverse to solve one-step and two-step equations. As we said in the lesson, in the vocabulary words in the lesson, one-step equations, one -step equations are those equations that just require one step for you to arrive at the solution. You can either add or subtract or multiply or divide. Just one step to arrive at the solution. Two-step equations are those equations that require two steps in order to arrive at the solution of that equation. Okay, now let's go ahead and, and solve the questions here. We shall just use multiplicative inverse method to solve this. Now, we have other methods to solve equations, but for this video, we shall just use the multiplicative inverse because that is our main focus for you to understand how to use it. Question 1. Find the multiplicative inverse of 25. Okay? 25 is the same thing as what? 25 over 1. If you express the uh, whole number as a rational number, it's 25 out of 1. So the multiplicative inverse, multiplicative inverse, would be, you just flip this, 1 out of 25. Because when you multiply 25 and 1 over 25, it gives you a product of 1. So the multiplicative inverse is 1 out of 25. Now, what if you have 4 over 5? The multiplicative inverse of 4 over 5, you flip it, is 5 over 4. By flipping, what we mean by flipping is that the numerator becomes the denominator, and the denominator becomes the numerator. Okay? We've mentioned this in previous videos. All right. The next one... Question 3, 4, 5, 6 are equations. We have to solve and check those equations. And we have to use the method of multiplicative inverse. So if we start from question 3, negative 4k is equal to 56. So in this case, what you do is you ask yourself, what is, if you're using the multiplicative inverse method, Look at the steps. The steps in using it. 
if you use the multiplicative inverse method, it has some steps. First of all, you want to find the coefficient of the variable. Okay? You want to find the coefficient of the variable. That's the first step. Then the second step is to find the multiplicative inverse of the coefficient of the variable. You find the multiplicative inverse of the coefficient of the variable. Find the multiplicative inverse of the coefficient of the variable. And when you now do this, you now use the multiplicative inverse to multiply. Okay? Now, this is for one step equations. You now use the multiplicative inverse to multiply both sides of the equation. This is for one step equation. For two step equation, you may need to make some adjustments first. To reduce it, for two-step equations, you need to reduce them to one-step equation, and then you use this step. Okay? These steps are for one-step equation. For one-step equations. For one-step equations. So take note of that. For two-step equations, we want to, first of all, reduce it to one step, and then we use this. So the first thing you want to do is to find the coefficient of the variable in the equation, the second thing you want to do is to find the multiplicative inverse of the coefficient of the variable in the equation. And then the final thing is to now use the multiplicative inverse to multiply both, both sides of the equation, or all terms. You can say, use the, use the let me just say mi. I'm going to use mi as multiplicative inverse. So let's say that multiplicative inverse I want to use mi Let me use mi Okay, so now use the multiplicative inverse to multiply both sides of the equation both sides of the equation or you can say all terms. You can say all terms of the equation. Or you can say both sides. That's the left hand side and the right hand side of the equation. Okay, so let's come to this question. Negative 4k equal to 56. Now, what is the variable here? What is the variable? Our variable is what? K. What is the coefficient of the variable? Now, this means coefficient. Okay? Coefficient. That's the short form, but let me write it. Yeah. Coefficient of the variable is what? We did coefficient in the previous videos. It's negative 4. Now, what is the multiplicative inverse, mi, of negative 4? It should be what? Negative 1 over 4. Because negative 4 means negative 4 out of 1. So, the multiplicative inverse will be negative 1 over 4. So what we now do is we now use this negative 1 over 4 to multiply both sides of the equation. Okay? This is, now this is a one step equation because it just needs only one step to get to the solution. Ordinarily you will say, ordinarily, how would you solve this equation? You will say divide both sides by negative 4. Ordinarily that is the way you solve it. And when you do that, 56 divided by negative 4 gives you negative 14. Yeah. But if you want to use the multiplicative inverse method, you've got to follow these steps. So we now use the, multi the multiplicative inverse to multiply both sides of the equation times negative 4k equal to negative 1 over 4 times 56. Whatever you do to the left hand side, you should do to the right hand side. Okay? So, this will now be what now? Uh, this will cross out. 4 will cancel 4. Negative times negative is positive. So, you only have now k. 
K will now be 4 divided by 4 is 1. 4 divided by 56 is 14. Negative 1 times 14 is what? Negative 14. So your K is negative 14. And that's the way you do it. Okay? Now, how do we, the next thing we have to do now is to do what? To check our work. So let me use this space to check our work. And of course, you remember how we check our work? We first of all write the equation. Let's first of all write check. Let's first of all write check and underline it. Then the next thing you write the equation, negative 4k equal to 56. Then you write the left hand side and the right hand side. What is the left hand side of this equation? Negative 4k. What is the right hand side of this equation? 56. And what did we get as our k? Because checking means, checking your solution means substituting the value of the variable that you got into the main equation to make sure that the left hand side of the equation is equal to the right hand side of the equation. Because it is an equation, equate, equity, equanimity, equality, equation, okay, equilateral, equal sides, equiangular, equal angles. So because it's an equation, the left hand side must be equal to the right hand side, right? So you want to now substitute wherever the side that has the variable. You want to substitute the value of the variable that you got into that side of the equations that have the variable and you want to know whether when you substitute it, whether the left hand side will give you the right hand side. If it gives it to you, you can dance. If it does not give it to you, there's a problem. Okay, so we now substitute the, the side that has the, the variable is the left hand side. We got our k as negative 14. So all we need to do is substitute it here. And this will be negative 4 times negative 14. Negative times negative is positive. 4 times 14 is 56. That's it. And then you can do some dancing or you drink some water. Okay. Then let's go to the next question. The next question, question 4, says 3 over 5p equal to 75. Now, I want to say something here. I want to say something here. Some students, this means 3 over 5 times p. That's what it means, 3 over 5 times p. So this gives you 3 over 5, you can write P like this, just in the middle of the fraction bar. This is okay. You can write it this way, 3P over 5. 3P over 5. This is okay. You, P can be in the numerator or by the side of the fraction bar. But this is what I noticed with students. Some students have taught. You can, they don't... Probably they write fractions like this, 3 over 5. And then when they want to write this, they will write it like this, 3 over 5p. And this looks like p is in the denominator. This is incorrect. We don't write it like this, 3 over 5p. So if you write your fractions like this, please, uh, you know, just... I'm not trying to tell you to change the way you write fractions, but you might need to give it a thought. Okay, to write fractions like this, rather than writing it this way. Yeah. Because you might write the P here. Now, if you write, if you're writing this way and you write it like this, if you write it like this, 3P over 5, then this is good. Okay? We are, it is a problem, is when you write 3, you write it this way, you know. That looks like the P is in the denominator. So we don't want, we don't want that. We want to write well. In mathematics. So, 
3 over 5p is equal to 75. How do we solve this? The variable is what? p. The coefficient of the variable is what? 3 over 5. Then the, the multiplicative inverse of 3 over 5 will give you what? 5 over 3. So what you want to do is to use the multiplicative inverse to multiply to multiply both sides of the equation. So this is 5 over 3 times 3 over 5p equal to 5 over 3 times 75. Okay, 3 will cross out, 5 will cross out. So you have that p is equal to 3 can divide 3 here to give you 1. 3 can divide 75. 3 into 7 is 2, 6, 15, 5. And then 5 times 25 is what? 125. So our P is 125. The next thing we do is to do what? To check our work. So we write the main uh, we write the main equation 3 over 5 P equal to 75. What is our left hand side? 3 over 5 P. What is our right hand side? 75. What did we get as our P? 125. We substitute it here. So this will give us 3 over 5 times 125. 5 into 5 is 1. 5 into 125 is 25. 3 times 25 is what? 75. You have 75 on your left hand side. You have 75 on the right hand side. You dance. Okay. The next one is question 5. Question 5 says negative 5 plus 3 over 5j equal to 10. Okay, now in this case, this is not a one step equation. It's not. So, it will require at least two steps. It's a two-step equation. So how do we do this now? How do we do this? What we can do first is we can add 5 to both sides so that we can get this uh, constant off. Right? And then we reduce it. We've reduced it to one-step equation. And then we can apply the multiplicative inverse. Okay? So... Um, the first thing we, we want to do is, in this case, I will need more space. So the first thing we want to do, okay, this is the method that your teachers use a lot, is to just add 5 here and add 5 here. And then this will, negative 5 plus 5 is gone. You now have 3 over 5j equal to 15. This is now a one-step equation. Okay, because if you want to, you can use just one step, multiply by 5 out of 3, and you will get the answer right away. Okay? Yeah, this is the method your teachers use, so it's not the method I use, but that's a good method too. Yeah, I have my own method as well. Okay, now this will be uh, 3 over 5j equal to 15. So now, what is the variable? The variable is what? J. What is the coefficient of the variable? Coefficient of the variable will be 3 over 5. What is the multiplicative inverse of 3 over 5? It will be what? 5 over 3. So what we want to do is to use 5 over 3 to multiply this equation. Right? So this will be 5 over 3 times 3 over 5j, 3j over 5, equal to 5 over 3 times 15. So 5 will divide 5 is gone, 3 will divide 3 is gone. So we now have that j, now j will be equal to 3 divided 3 is 1, 3 divided 15 is what? 5. 5 times 5 is what? 25. So we have J as our 25. 
Right? The next thing we have to do is to do what? Check our walk. Okay, in checking our walk, do we check with this main equation or do we check with this modified equation? Now, I've said this before in the previous videos. When you check your work, please and please check with the main equation that you are given. It is very important. You check with the main equation. Why? Why must you check with the main equation? Why don't you check with the modified equation? We check with the main equation because we don't even know whether our answer is correct. That is why we want to check. And if we check it with the modified, it might be true. Now, our modified equation might be wrong. So that's why we need to check with the main equation. So we write the main equation, negative 5 plus 3 over 5j equal to 10. What is our left-hand side? Negative 5 plus 3 over 5 times j. Okay? This is the left hand side. The equal sign demarcates or differentiates the left hand from the right hand. Okay? And our right hand side is 10. So our j, we now substitute for, we now substitute 25 for j here. So this will be negative 5 plus 3 over 5 times 25. Right? So we do PEMDAS. You still remember PEMDAS? Please excuse my dear on Sally. PEMDAS, parentheses, exponent, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. Order of operations. So when you come here, you have addition and you have multiplication. You do the multiplication first. So this is now negative 5 plus 5 into 5 is 1, 5 into 25 is 5, 3 times 5 is what? 15. And then you owe 5, you have 15. It gives you 10. 10 on our left, 10 on our right. That's good. Okay. The last but not the least. The last but not the least. We have another two-step equation. Negative 30 equal to negative 6g plus 6. Alright. Uh, now, I, in previous videos, that in the previous lessons we've talked about on equations, I mentioned that it is very important that you move, if you look at the variable, if it is on the left hand, if it's on, if it is on the right hand side of the equation, it is good to rearrange it and move it to the left. Why? I mean, now this is an equation. This is an equation. So think of it this way. Okay? Now think of it this way. Assuming I have I have 2 plus 3 to give me 5. Right? I can say that 5 is equal to 2 plus 3. So in this first equation, the left hand side is 2 plus 3 and the right hand side is 5. But in the second equation, the left hand side is 5 and the right hand side is 2 plus 3. It is the same. Okay. But now, why would I choose to move this to be the left and this to be the right? And this is my reason here. Let's say you go to the store, Walmart store, and you want to buy, uh, let's say you want to buy a, a plate, or let's say you want to buy a cup, okay? A cup. So now, uh, you now ask, but the tag, the tag is not there. The tag of the, the price of the cup, the tag price is not there. So you now go to the cashier and say, please, what is the price? Price, let's call this P. You now say, what is the price of this cup? Right? The cashier tells you, okay, 
price is five dollars. Or the cashier tells you, okay, five dollars is the price. Which one would you prefer to hear? I mean, if the cashier tells you the price of the cup is five dollars, that's equal to five dollars. Or the cashier tells you five dollars is the price of the cup. Five dollars is what to be. Which one sounds more? Uh, which one sounds more acceptable? I mean, which one is more inviting? Which one is more? Which one do you prefer more to hear more? Is the first one. The price is five dollars. So, you know, the English way. In English price is five dollars. So P is equal to. You put the variable first on the left hand side before you now talk about a constant. So, all we need to do is rearrange. Rearrange means, make, and if you, if, you, if you do this, it saves you a lot of uh, problems or a lot of, a lot of potential mistakes. So, if you rearrange, rearrange means make your left hand side to be your right hand side and then your right hand side to be your left hand side. Now, you can do this because of what? Because it is an equation because of the equal sign. That's why you can do this because it's an equation. Okay, when we do that, when we do that, what do we have? We now have that negative 6g plus 6 is equal to negative 30. And then the way I will do this is I will just move this 6 over here. Okay, <laughs> yeah, but let me do it the way some teachers do it here. So you subtract 6 here, you subtract 6. Whatever you do to the left hand side, you have to do to the right hand side. 6 minus 6 is gone. You have negative 6g here, equal to. You owe 30, you owe 6. This is negative 36. Now, what is the variable? Here, the variable is what? g. What is the coefficient of the variable? Coefficient of the variable. Is what? Negative 6. What is the multiplicative inverse of negative 6? The multiplicative inverse of negative 6 will give you negative 1 over 6. And then we now have to multiply. Let me come here and finish it up. And then we now have to multiply both sides of the equation by the multiplicative inverse. Right? So we have that negative 1 over 6 times negative 6g is equal to negative 1 over 6 times negative 36. Okay? So 6 will divide 6 to give you 1. Negative times negative is positive. Our g will now be equal to, on the right hand side, 6 will divide 6 to give you 1. 6 divided 36 is 6. Negative 1 times negative 6 is 6. Our g is equal to 6. Now, let us do what? Check our work to see whether we are right. So, in checking, we write the main problem first. Negative 30 equal to negative 6g plus 6. What is our left hand side? Negative 30. What is our right hand side? Negative 6g plus 6. Now, our variable is not on the left hand side, so we leave it. Now, like I said, like I said initially, use the one they gave you. Not the one that you have modified by rearranging. Use the one they gave you. Okay, now our variable is on the right at this time, so we have to, we don't, we're not bothered with the left, it's a constant, we now have to focus here. So we substitute the value of 6 to, uh, for g on the right hand side. This will give us negative 6 times 6 plus 6. You use your order of operations, negative 6 times 6 is what, negative 36 plus 6. You owe 36, you have 6, you have, you, I mean you owe negative, you owe 30. 
You owe 36, you have 6, that means you still owe 30. Negative 30 on the right, negative 30 on the left. Thank you so much for listening to this video presentation. Part 2 will deal with uh, writing equations. Okay? Part 2 is going to deal with writing one step and two step equations. So please, watch out for part two. Thank you so much for listening to this video and you have a great day.